so sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I was not expecting it today. <laughs> so as you heard me get up then, I got up, broke wind. Oh, <laughs> this is quite good. Now I have to have a note, because I have actually only sort of uh, planned this since this morning. I was asked weeks ago, but I only sort of uh, wrote about it this morning. And I nearly, I nearly actually didn't come this evening. Yes, I know, because a couple of things happened at home. Uh, we've got Dutch elm disease in our front door. <laughs> and the knocker fell off. And um, also, the stair lift <laughs> has actually got stuck halfway up the stairs. <laughs> I had to come to this too, so I left the wife on the stairs. <laughs> But I'm a kind, I don't know, I'm a kind person. I, 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 I gave her a nice uh, sort of cheese and onion sandwich and a flask of tea. She strapped it. <laughs> but she uh, hadn't got anything to read, so I said there was no point in keeping the lights on. <laughs> but she's fine. <hot. laughs> she, she doesn't worry about things like that, I know. That. <laughs> Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we come here to honour two individuals. <laughs> One, a dynamic thrusting, <laughs> focused businessman, and the others Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> we come here to honour these two individuals because they're sort of, they're sort of superheroes, aren't they? They are, they're sort of superheroes. And I think they should go home and get their partners to make them sort of a nicer lycra. <laughs> that, they, that they can wear to such functions as superheroes. Admittedly, in Kevin's case, he might have to have the cape taken up at six inches or <laughs> But he'll be fine. And I think they should have that because we don't, people in the street won't know what they've achieved <laughs> unless they look the part. So I really think they should, and, and I really hope it takes up on that. I thought John Kendall. <laughs> <laughs> said about these two, he said, well, I don't actually remember what he said. <laughs> and when he said it, it sort of faded away. <laughs> but whatever he said, he needed saying. <laughs> so I'm very glad he did. <laughs> In recent, in recent months, we've been hearing a series of speeches from uh, Ian about his love life. <laughs> and I think this has been fascinating. It's, it's been really, really wonderful. He's asked me some advice on this. <laughs> Clearly, you don't get to look like this every day. <laughs> and, um... <laughs> I've given him a couple of tips to help him along the way of, sort of, if you like, love and wooing the opposite sex. I, I have, have actually helped him in that as well. Um, uh, he asked me, uh, you know, what did I do when I was a young man to get further with the lady of your choice? And he didn't like the idea of begging. <laughs> So we dropped that. <laughs> sort of suggested perhaps, you know, perhaps alcohol. <laughs> if you give the lady with just alcohol, this sometimes can have a good effect. <laughs> when I was a young man, we couldn't afford alcohol. Alcohol. <laughs> or even alcohol, we couldn't afford that either. <laughs> and um, we used to rely on cocoa. <laughs> and if they have a lot of it, they get very sleepy. <laughs> so it does work, and I think that's a, that is one of the things I suggested. <laughs> Ian, of course, is known, when he's in his management life at the club, he was known as the Whispering Avenger. <laughs> oh. 
He would come up behind you because none of us knew what we were doing, and he always did know what he was doing, which is the reason he's a TCM and the rest of us lot. And um, he used to creep up behind you and sort of tell you, oh, Whispering Avenger, I thought was a rather nice title. And of course, they, these guys, they don't heat their homes like the rest of us. They just radiate charisma. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin established this club originally in where? For someone to say it, where? And it was <coughs> and it was so cold oh, yes, in was. where that I used to stick chalk ices down the underpants just to warm me up. <laughs> <laughs> That's how cold it was. <laughs> I can't tell you how pleased I was when he came here eventually. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, Toastmasters actually keeps me young. I, I do say, speaking to myself, I do think it does. I mean, I have been um, put on um, Viagra. <laughs> no, I have. <laughs> By my doctor. I, uh, they gave me a very thorough examination before prescribing. I take three in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> What's the dose of ginger? Uh, uh, three in three in three in midday, and three in the evening. And they reckon that by August I'll be able to pucker a bit. <laughs> so that's good. I look forward. No, I look forward to that. What? Pucker. pucker. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to carry on with my charity work, my favourite charity, of which, of course, our friend here is the president, his incontinence in the workplace, and I, and I want to continue with that work. I was working for the Samaritans. <laughs> I only did the one day. <laughs> I took five calls. They all committed suicide. <laughs> Terribly worrying, the last one was the wrong number. <laughs> <laughs> I want to help my wife with her, her work. She's, she actually wrote the Penguin Cookbook. <laughs> Stuffing those bastards in <laughs> And, um, did you can swear at a dinner? It's nothing to do with this thing. Um, I came home the, the other night and unexpectedly. And there was a man in my bedroom. Stark naked. <laughs> Stark naked. And my wife was laying on the bed, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry about that. I, I, I've just got to run low. And um, I said to And I said to the bloke, I said, uh, what the hell is going on here? He said, it's all right, I'm just from the local council. You've got the infestation of moths. I said, but you've got no clothes on. He said, the bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, Toastmaster said, we'd all agree, is taught the world how to public speak. It's a remarkable organisation. I think all of us in this room who are um, members, are glad we're members. And we sometimes have one or two people in our midst who do great things within the club, or within their respective clubs. And Kevin and Ian are those two individuals, in my opinion. It's a journey I've never taken. 
It's a journey I would dread to take. I don't think I've got the time now. Um, <laughs> it's a long journey. It's formidable, and they've done the most remarkable thing. And I think we should all congratulate them and enjoy with them this wonderful night. Thank you very much.